Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and today I'll be talking to you about how to care for a Czechoslovakian wolf dog. I will be explaining the origins of the breed, their character, their dietary requirements, if they can be trained, how to groom one, how to walk and harness them up, and finally, whether this dog is suitable for you and your home. This is my Czechoslovakian wolf dog, Kumi, and she's from an Italian line. But where exactly did the Czechoslovakian wolf dog originate from? The Czechoslovakian Wolfdog was developed by the Czechoslovakian Army in 1955 when the countries of the Czech Republic and Slovakia were joined together. The Army was looking for a dog that would have the temperament, pack mentality and trainability of the German Shepherd Dog and the strength, physical build and stamina of the Carpathian Wolf. The weather extremes were very harsh that the army were working in, so they felt that by introducing wolf blood into the breed, they could toughen the German Shepherd up and improve their senses. Initially, they bred a female Carpathian wolf named Britta to a male German Shepherd called Caesar, but the first generation puppies were not trainable as army dogs, as they were nervous and unresponsive. But several generations later, with consecutive breedings back to German Shepherds, puppies were produced with higher endurance, better sense of smell, night vision and hearing. So what about character? Well, Czechoslovakian wolf dogs differ greatly. Now, Kumi here is very, very different to Mr. Blue, who I've got at home. Some wolf dogs are more nervous than others and others are far more confident. Now, Kumi here, when I take her out in public, she's very guarding, she's very wary of strangers. She tolerates dogs, but she doesn't particularly like them. If people come up to her very, very quickly, she often shows her teeth. She likes people to be respectful and keep their distance. Mr. Blue, on the other hand, is very, very friendly. He's a bit of a puppy. He loves to be touched and he loves attention. So the general character with the Czechoslovakian wolf dog is that it's never always going to be the same. But one thing you can say for sure is they're a little bit like a German Shepherd. So if you think about that guarding instinct that a German Shepherd has, then that is sort of what you're getting with a Czechoslovakian wolf dog and intensify that, make that far more raw. And that is what you're getting. <laughs> One question I get asked a lot is, do Czechoslovakian wolf dogs make good guard dogs? Well, absolutely not compared to a German Shepherd and a Malinois that are really brilliant guard dogs. The Czechoslovakian army did originally want to breed them to become border control dogs, so you would think that they would make good guard dogs. But because of the timidness of the wolf, this has sort of diluted that effect down quite rapidly. And to be quite honest, these dogs can guard you, but they are more interested in looking after themselves. So if I'm going out on a walk with Kumi and somebody was to approach me and she was to show her teeth, it might be more because she was worried that they were coming towards her than coming towards me. Mr. Blue, on the other hand, who's a little bit more German Shepherdy than Kumi here, he could have the potential to guard me, but certainly nothing in the capacity compared to a German Shepherd or a Malinois. Now, in my back garden, if I was to have people approach my house, these two would certainly look like they were guard dogs. They would probably bark a lot. They would probably jump up at the fence. Mr. Blue, possibly would run at people, whereas Kumi here I think would run away because she's got more of a wolf temperament and she's far more inclined to looking after herself. So if you're thinking of getting one of these dogs as a guard dog, then don't bother. I would advise that you go for a German Shepherd or a Malinois. One question I get asked a lot is, are they good with children? 
cats and small dogs. Well, let's break that down a little bit. Now, I've got two children that I have raised with these two dogs, and honestly, I haven't found any more gentle dogs than these both. They are not aggressive dogs to children, and the children in your family are going to be part of your pack, and these dogs will know that your children are part of the pack, and they will be gentle, and they will be lovely with them. But the one thing that I would be very, very careful is, is they're incredibly energetic dogs. They have very, very sharp claws and massive feet. So even though they're going to be very gentle and loving to your children because they love them and they're part of their pack, they're still gonna jump on them and they're still gonna accidentally scratch them. So I would say that probably these dogs are not for families that have babies or very small children and they would be much suited to the older child, probably age eight and above. As far as cats go, well, I've never had a cat, so I can't really comment, but I can talk about other people that I know. Most people I know that have wolf dogs generally do avoid small animals in the house, including cats. Now, you could have a cat that was living in the house first, and you could gently introduce the dog to your cat, and it might work out. But just to err uh, on the side of caution, I would say it'd be probably best not to have a cat in the same house. These dogs certainly enjoy chasing things, so if your cat's like to run around a lot and run up the garden then they're going to chase them and it's going to become incredibly stressful for your cats. Now as far as small dogs there's no reason why these animals cannot live with a small dog but one thing which I have found out about my Czechoslovakian wolf dogs is that they do not tolerate bad manners. So if you have a small dog that is really snappy and really nasty these dogs will not put up with it. So you can only have them living with a smaller dog if they're very placid and a very nice well-behaved dog. If you've got one of those small little Pomeranians or Chihuahuas that grab and snap and bite, I would say that they'd be living on borrowed time. So what if you want to abandon your wolf dog? Well, this is something that we do need to talk about. Dogs get abandoned every single day into shelters, but what happens if you want to abandon one of these type of dogs? Well, it's completely different. Because of the temperament of a wolf dog, and I'm not just talking about a Czechoslovakian wolf dog, I'm talking about wolf hybrids all over the world. You become their world. You are their family, you are their pack, and they are incredibly mistrusting to everybody else outside the family unit. So if one day you turn around and you take them down a shelter and you drop them off and you don't come back, their whole life crumbles and falls to pieces. They can become incredibly aggressive. So anybody else that isn't you, they can not want to go near, which makes them in incredibly hard to rehome. They sometimes end up staying in shelters simply because they can't be touched by other people. They can pine and it hurts them desperately. They can shut down. And even when you find a new owner, it can take them months and months and months to trust that owner again. One thing that wolves don't do is they don't forget. And this is something that a wolf dog has inherited from the wolf. Everything that has happened to them in the past, they never forget. And they'll never forget being abandoned. So if you want one of these dogs, it's for life. You never give up on a wolf dog. <laughs> One question I get asked a lot is, can you train a Czechoslovakian wolf dog? <laughs> Off she goes. Um, I've got friends that have trained them really, really well. So yes, you can train them, but for the average person that might be a little bit lazy, and I've got to admit, I've been a little bit lazy training her, but I have given her some basic commands. So I'm gonna show you these on camera and you can make up your mind to whether you think that she's a well-trained dog or not. Kumi, Kumi, come here. Good girl, Kumi, sit. Good girl, well done. Kumi, Kumi, <laughs> Kumi, look, look, Kumi, Kumi. Kumi, pull, good girl. There we go, that's good. Good girl, Kumi, <laughs> Kumi, that's it. Right, Kumi, down, good girl. Good girl, it's Kumi. All right, now Kumi. Kumi, Kumi, up, up. Good girl. Not bad. <laughs> 
Some Czechoslovakian wolfdogs can also do agility very well. Some are man-trained and others make exceptional sniffer dogs. One of the questions I get asked is, do I groom my Czechoslovakian wolf dog and how? Well, Kumi here, I hardly ever groom. Now you can see that she's not entirely short coated. She's got some long hair around the neck and she's got some long hair on the tail. But wolves in the wild have got the type of coats, which when they molt, it just sheds out and it sort of just gets blown out by the wind. Luckily for this breed, they've sort of inherited a lot of that. So unlike a, a Samoyed or an Alaska Malamute that really does need to be groomed right down to its base coat, these dogs can get away with not being groomed. You should, though, give them a little bit of a brush if you think they might be getting a little bit matted. But Kumi here doesn't really like it. So if you've got a Czechoslovakian dog like mine, you might have to think of some ways of tricking them into being groomed. Now, for a start, we've got probably the worst one of all, which is a comb. Now, let's see what she makes of the comb if I start using that. Oh, it's actually OK today. <laughs> She doesn't let me do this at home. So that's, that's actually pretty good. At home, she won't tolerate this. So um, if you find that your Czech wolf dog runs away from you and you want to use something a little bit more gentle, you could go for this. It's a very soft bristle brush. And if you start grooming them from when they're very young and a puppy, it will become something that they enjoy. And she's actually doing really well with this today. And that's all you really need is a quick run over with one of these brushes. Now these, sometimes the dogs don't particularly like that, but it can really get that base coat out. She's doing really well with this. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Did you hear that? She's like, no, I'm not having that. But when I'm at home with her and this, she likes to run away from me. But that's a very good brush for getting right down to the base coat. And of course, if your dog is very, very squeamish and likes to run away, you can trick them with one of these brilliant little mitts where they think that you're giving them a nice stroke. All right, so what do you feed a wolf dog? Well, I recommend the BARF diet, which stands for Biologically Approved Raw Food for Dogs, which looks a little bit like this, but it's a lot better than it looks. If you look at a wolf dog, it's so very, very close to a wolf. Now, a wolf is a carnivore. It has a short intestine and it has all of that wonderful gut bacteria to process raw food. I only ever feed a bath diet to my wolf dogs and I would recommend 100% that you do the same. If you'd like to find out a little bit more about the bath diet, you can check out some of my other videos which go into more detail about it. But it's very easy to do a bath diet and you can purchase it very easily from your local pet shop. Another question which people ask me are Czechoslovakian wolf dogs destructive? My two aren't, but don't take my word for it because believe you me, I've been into other people's houses and they have had their houses pretty much destroyed. You know, it might be sofas torn up or curtains torn up or cushions torn up. But do you know what? That's the owner, it's not the dog. These dogs are so easy to be trained out of being destructive. And the moment they came into my house, I trained them onto Nyla bones and they didn't touch a single other thing in my house. I've never had my carpets touch. They haven't chewed up anything. They have never been destructive. So in my experience, these are not destructive dogs. They don't dig in my garden either, but it has happened to other people. So make sure you get your training in when they're very young. One of the questions I get asked the most is how do I harness up my wolf dog in order to take them for a walk? Now Kumi here is a very timid and nervous dog and sometimes she'd like to run away if somebody surprises her on a walk and this is why security to me is, is really, really, really important. 
So what I do with Kumi, which is a very, very good idea if your wolf dog is also a little bit mistrusting and a bit nervous, is I walk her on a collar and a harness at the same time. So for this, I've got a typical harness, which fits very well. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on her so you can see. And when I clip it on, it fits snug. It's not tight, so it doesn't rub into her, but it's very, very snug. This means that if she gets spooked, she's not gonna run away when I meet somebody on a walk. Now, in order to keep her on the collar and the harness at the same time, you need to get something that is called a bungee. And you can get these on websites. Sometimes you can see them on Husky sled dog websites. These are great because what they do is they have a loop and each end can fix to the harness and the other end can fix to the collar. So what I'll do with this is I'll fix one end to the collar as so, and the other end round here will go on her harness like this. Now this means that if she decides to step out of her collar on a walk, I've still got control of her on the harness. And if she wants to slip out of the harness, I've still got control of her on the collar. So it's a double security method, so I never ever lose her. And what you'll wanna do then is to get your leash and it simply clips on to that bit. And then you have full control of them. Now, another security measure that I often do is when I'm walking, I like to put a walking belt on. Now, this enables me to walk a few dogs at the same time. Now, a walking belt is like this, and you can buy these online. I got this, I believe, online many, many years ago, and um, all it does is, stay there a minute, Kumi, is I put this around my waist, like so, and it's got a couple of bars hanging down. Now those are used to put these special double-ended leashes on. Now you can get these from your pet shop or again online. And what I do is I clip one end on here and she is attached to me. And what I would do is I will take off the leash, the short leash that I showed you a minute ago, and I'll substitute it with this. Now this means that when I take her for a walk, she is attached to me. So if something frightens her, she can't pull out of my hand and run away. She's always attached to me. I think one of the things you're gonna to have to watch out for is not getting pulled over, because obviously if your dogs are very, very strong and you're not a very strong person, this could potentially pull you flat. When I'm walking my dogs, I only ever take two at a time. I've got her on one side and I've got Mr. Blue on the other side. And that means that I've always got them under control. And as I stand up, you can see that she's safely attached to me. And it's great because if you go hands-free, it means that you can use your mobile phone, whether you're making a phone call or whether you'd like to take some nice photos of her when you're on a walk and you know that she will not get away from you. Now, the final thing I'd like to talk to you about is keeping your dog safe. And I mean keeping your dog safe because this could save their life. Now, depending on what type of wolf dog you've got, some of them don't particularly like people, some of them don't particularly like other people's dogs, and she absolutely hates the vet. So I've got this muzzle here. Now, she doesn't particularly like the muzzle, but I'm saving her life by preventing her from biting somebody. If a dog bites somebody on your premises, whether they've even snuck into your back garden accidentally, you could be taken to court, or worse still, your dog could be put to sleep. So when you're walking your dog and you're not sure to whether they might overreact in a situation, you should always carry a muzzle on you at all times. It doesn't mean you have to use it all the time, but if you feel that the situation needs that she needs to have something like this on, it could save her life. And I'll show you quickly how it goes on, like so. And what you have to do is you have to train your dog to get used to them because I don't particularly like them to start with. I wouldn't keep them on all the time because it stops them from drinking and doing other things. But if you're in one of those awkward situations and you're not quite sure of what the dog's going to do, you might be down the pub and you know that she overreacts when people walk past, then definitely carry one of these around. So finally, the most important question of all, who 
is the perfect person to own a Czechoslovakian wolf dog. Well, if you say no to one or more of the following statements, then you are probably not the right person for a Czechoslovakian wolf dog. But it doesn't mean that you can't come back at a later point in your life when you are ready to answer yes to all of the following questions. Otherwise, go and look at another breed. Number one. Someone who works from home or can take the dog with them to work. Number two, someone who can have more than one dog for company. Number three, someone strong as these dogs are powerful. Number four, someone kind and positive as a wolf dog cannot be hit or dominated. Number five, someone who isn't fussy about fur and possible furniture destruction. Number six, someone with older children or none at all. Number seven, someone who doesn't have small prey pets around. Number eight, someone who likes exercise and will walk them often. Number nine, someone with a fence large secure garden. And number 10, someone who will never abandon this dog and who will love them for life. Well, if you enjoyed this episode of Animal Watch and the Czechoslovakian Wolf Dog, then be sure to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, where we will be bringing you fantastic episodes every single week on dogs, on wolves, on wolf dogs, on animal rescue and conservation. Bye for now.